What's it like racing an old Monaro around the great Mount Panorama circuit? Fred Brain tells us all, and we reprise a comment from the late, great Peter Brock. Well, we often hear on the program our good friend Fred Brain, who comes with us as a mechanical engineer with both degree and experience. He has just been racing at Bathurst in the historic class where he pedalled around in his 1969 Holden Monaro. What was it like? Let's find out. Good day, Fred. Hi, Dave. Have you driven the Monaro at Bathurst before? Yeah, I've, I've had the opportunity to run there a number of times before, but uh, it's always good to go back. What was the first car you raced there? A Datsun 1600, which was the old rally car that uh, became a circuit racing car. So that was a little four-cylinder Japanese with an independent rear end and some pretty good brakes to the weight of the car. Did you notice any difference in the Monaro? Uh, yeah, brakes being the major issue there, yes. <laughs> big heavy car with brakes that are not so good <laughs> I was going to use the word lumbering but I was trying to be polite <laughs> if you had the choice of 40 more kilowatts an extra gear because you've only got a four speed manual I presume and better brakes for the Monaro around Bathurst what would you take? Good question Actually, I think I'd go for the 40 kilowatts in actual fact. Is that because you're a hoon or because you're a true racer? Probably both. I'd like to think I'm a true racer, but you can never have too much horsepower. Coming down the fastest part of the circuit, Conrod Strait, before going into the kink onto the Caltex Chase, are you at peak revs in top gear? Probably not the maximum the engine's built for, just kind of the maximum maximum revs that I'm built for is probably closer to the truth. Probably topping out at maybe 130 mile an hour, I'd say. How fast do you take that first right-hand sweeper? Do you take it flat out? Yes, yes. When I'm when I'm confident the brakes are okay to pull up for the sharp left-hander in the chase, then, uh, yeah, I can get through that kink at the chase flat out. We saw the third race that you were participating in, and it appeared at one time you took that corner, you actually went into somewhat of an oversteer slide. Our colleagues noticed it. Were you aware of it? To be honest, I wasn't really. I, I don't recall having a particularly bad moment there. I do recall once breaking perhaps a little earlier when I was still turning a bit, which might have been that particular time, but I don't, uh, I don't recall having a bad moment where it um, started looking as, though, looking as though or feeling as though it was going to get away from me. I still look more spectacular from outside than inside. Maybe your mind was on other things. Maybe, yeah, maybe stopping for the left hand was probably more more imperative at that point. Before we ask about the brakes on his car, many years ago when Fred was entering the Monaro in his first event, I asked Peter Brock if he had any advice in driving such a classic Holden. His reply was succinct. My best advice is um, to put the brakes on very, very early. They've got nice steering, uh, they put power down pretty well, but um, the braking department has to be respected. It's, it's not very strong. Did you try different brakes over the weekend? Yeah, I, I started out with a, a different set of brake pads for the first two days because I knew my better pads wouldn't last me the whole three days. They were all partly worn, so I just used better pads on the third day. How big a difference did you notice? Enormous, quite honestly. Yeah, the difference was chalk and cheese between... Uh, between the two different types of pads. Even though the first pads were race brake pads or race pads, but the uh, the second set were better race pads. I did try to catch you up on Friday night after some practice and that, but you were working on the car. Was it the brakes you were changing? Yeah, I did a change of change of pads on the um, on the Friday night or the Friday late Friday. Actually, on the Saturday, I changed discs as well as pads because the uh, better pads they really made a mess of the discs that i had on on the sat first race on the saturday are they ventilated discs yes we're allowed to run the equivalent of um, later model holden discs the hq model so they're ventilated thicker discs but the same diameter 
I think you had a couple of good dices with some minis. Was that you up the straight and them round the corners? Essentially, yes, yeah. The chap you interviewed the other day, Chris Collette, he has a very fast mini. Even going up the mountain, he was quite fast. But certainly going down the mountain, he was very fast compared to myself. He actually overtook me in two separate races, once going over Skyline and then once going into the Dipper. <laughs> so he's a, a brave chap in a small mini. That's all I can say. What was your greatest defence there? Your size? <laughs> Essentially, yes, but I, I didn't try and block him too much. I figured he was he was going to make a move and he didn't need a lot of space to do it. So I just made sure I knew where he was to just leave a space for him to get by um, in breaking areas is what it amounted to. As a young lad down on the farm, the first Bathurst race you saw on television, what year was that? 69, funnily enough. Who won that? I think that was Colin Bond in a Monaro, funnily enough. And they say that uh, it helps sell on a Monday morning. Well, perhaps not. It just uh, breeds a sense of religious fervour, I think. Uh, yes, yeah, I think that's right. But, but our family, we were holding people. Which part of the circuit do you think suited your car the best and which the least? Well, I suppose down through the S's, the downhill sharper bits suits it the least because of the sheer weight and size. And I suppose going up the mountain probably suits it the best where you've got the sweeping sweeping corners. Griffin. The drive up mountain straight and then the sweeping corners to get up to the top. That's the most enjoyable, is it? Yes. Um, although the whole circuit is enjoyable, I have to say. Uh, but I do like the run up from the from the cutting the run from the cutting up to uh, McPhillamy Park. Uh, that's probably the bit that I'd say, yes, yeah, so I like that because it flows flows very nicely. You can keep the foot on the pedal most of the way there. It must be hard coming on or through McPhillamy and onto Skyline where you have such a bulky car that the momentum could carry it off the track as much as it could push it along. Certainly driving the Datsun, as I recall, it's a few years since I did drive it there, it's about 20 years. Yeah, you certainly feel as though you can move it around on the track better than the Monaro. With the, the sheer weight of si weight and size of the Monaro, you've got to aim it in a certain direction and brake and hopefully don't get it wrong. Whereas the Datsun, if you got a little bit wrong occasionally, you felt as though you, you still had time to correct it, whereas the Monaro, I suspect, if you got it wrong, you run out of time very quickly. And variety, is that part of its mystique? Yes, absolutely. I mean, every corner is just so different in terms of the camber and the slope into, out of and around the corner. Every corner just has this different feel to it. You've never had problems concentrating, I guess. Uh, no, no, it's actually not been too bad. I think the uh, maybe the speed and the walls help you keep your con concentration up, actually. <laughs> the Mustangs do particularly well. Why? Power to weight is what it appears to be. They're, they're a relatively light car, and they're running the uh, 289 Ford V8, which they seem to be able to extract quite a lot of power out of now. And they run front disc brakes, so they, they stop fairly well. But that's the fundamentals of it, power to weight and being able to stop. They seem to be the car to have now in our category. There were a variety of other cars. Is there good camaraderie amongst the group? Yeah, yeah. I uh, know everyone gets on pretty well, actually. In general terms, yeah, there's really good camaraderie. and Everyone wants to take their car home in one piece, typically in uh, in the Group N category, the historics. You don't really get a chance normally even just to interact with other classes? Is that something you have done but couldn't do this time? I probably wouldn't go and interact with other classes so much as just have a bit of a chat with other drivers, and we could still do that, the ones that are running in our category, plus also a couple of other categories. We could still, still wander around and talk to, talk to people, so it wasn't in our area of the paddock area. It, um, it wasn't a restriction. When I said other classes, I wasn't being socio-demographic. I was talking about categories of vehicles. Yeah. Not that we look down on other classes of vehicle, of course, but <laughs> the HQs weren't there. 
<laughs> but they're nice people. <laughs> and I can't say too much given Moffins and Monaro. <laughs> Pamela watched the races? No, she didn't see any of them, but it was all, always unclear. I, I didn't like to say this is the time we're on, watch the TV, because we were unsure what would actually be televised of our racing anyway. You're suggesting that she wasn't prepared to get an esky out, put her feet up and watch the whole uh, four days of events? No, no, I don't think she saw too much of it, actually. In fact, she probably didn't see any of it. (laughs) (laughs) If I know Pamela well, she probably read a novel and probably not the latest biography of Sir Jack Brabham, but that's another story. (laughs) No. I do like hearing people say, wow, I saw your Monaro out on the track. It was so good to see one. And I think, yeah, okay, you put a smile on people's face, apart from putting one on my own face, driving around there anyway. All the best to Pamela and and thanks again. Okay, all right, no worries. And that was Fred Brain, who has, on many occasions, enlightened us with his knowledge as a mechanical engineer, but also as a person who embraces an adventure looks at it in detail, conducts it with meticulous preparation and time commitment, all to the enjoyment of both himself and to those around him.